Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm coming to you live from Harlem in New York City. This is The Ramble. I'm Alex. We'll be here till midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Lawrence. His last name, Brown. Middle name, Boobells. <laughs> How are you, Larry? Good, good. Uh, just got back uh, work this weekend with our old friend Dana Carvey. Oh, really? How's he doing? That was, that was nice. His first uh, his first uh, stand up in over eight months, and uh, well, he stopped. Crowd. He stopped doing it because his son died, right? Right, right. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, and and what uh, what kind of condition was he in? Was he okay? He was great. He had uh, he had notes on stage, but uh, he had a huge crowd, and they just loved him. So he, he killed. You say he had notes on stage. When you say yeah. th- when you say that, what does it mean exactly? I mean, does he actually r- read from the notes, or what goes on there? What's the what's the process? He just looks down and reminds him a bit. He's got these big yellow those big yellow legal tablets, and uh, he's got his bits are tend to be really like three to five minutes each so he just i guess has a header and to remind him but uh, he was not hiding them and uh yeah hell i bring out notes to look at a couple of jokes i can't remember oh oh really okay don't some comedians write them on their hand or something did you hear me did we lose him we lost him yeah here we'll call him again here I don't know how that happened. Okay. I I don't know how that happened. Yes, I did. Welcome to the wonderful world of Skype, which we're using, that always fails. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, let's get back to uh, uh, cheating. (laughs) Yeah, Dana was looking at notes, and I actually had some notes that I pulled out, and I was just doing a very short set. And you pull those out to remind you of stuff you do? I just have these, my jokes are mostly one-liners. I can't remember them all, and I didn't want to forget. There's a couple I didn't want to forget, so I just looked at those. What's a joke you thought you might forget? Uh, There's a new one. Uh, uh, I had to close my account at the sperm bank. It was getting zero interest. (laughs) Which someone told me is a good joke. It's a great joke. It's a great joke. And I don't know that I've heard it anywhere else. (laughs) Isn't that a problem for you? I mean, don't you worry when you write a joke, hey... Have I heard this someplace before? Yeah, that's uh, right, and that that can happen to anybody. So. Well, I mean, you know, you see somebody, they tell a joke, maybe five years ago, and all of a sudden you write a joke, and somehow you remember that joke, but you don't remember that that joke was one you heard before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Has anybody ever come up to you and said, that's my joke? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Yeah. Were they nasty about it, or were they just trying no, to... No, they were something? actually, uh, uh, they were very civil, and uh, I just said, oh, so I, won't, I won't do it again. Well, you, you know, one of the biggest things in comedy is, and, and it, the most protective things, is, is people uh, don't want their jokes being done by other people. No. You know? Um, so, anyway, so... And so, the trouble with uh, one-liners are so easy to steal. So, mm-hmm. so where did you do this little gig? This was, believe it or not, at an indie casino uh, in a place called Oroville. Yeah. Which is way outside Sacramento. And, uh, what, what's an Indian casino like? I've never been in an Indian casino. Is it like any other casino? <laughs> Well, they tend the Indian casinos tend to all look alike. Although there's a couple that are really beautiful, I was at. But uh, yeah, this was a pretty 
let's see, it was a six-story building, and the room we were in, it was just a flat room with 1,300 seats. Okay. And it just went back forever. It looked like a, it looked like something where Joseph Stalin would be giving a speech. It was just. A, it went back forever. You mean it wasn't as wide as it was long? Yeah, it's uh, very long, and uh, yeah, like, uh, there's 1,300 seats in it. So now it's an Indian casino. Are they all decorated the same way, like looking like they're Indian? Uh, no. <laughs> But they are like the old casino. I forgot how bad it was when you walk in. Everybody's smoking. And, oh, uh, really? Okay. Do they call them Indian casinos now or Native American casinos? I always hear Indian casino. Maybe that's not proper. It's probably not proper. I don't know. Indians was something that we named them because when Columbus came over, he figured this was India. The West Indies, yeah. Yeah, or the, or, or I think India. He thought it was India. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, he was looking. He was looking he for. Was, a short, he was way off. He was looking for a short route to India, and he went in the wrong direction. Uh, and so we now celebrate once a year a day for a, a fuck up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, and and you know, there are places where they don't celebrate Columbus Day anymore. Uh, and. Uh, the, used to be big in San Francisco, and now it's become uh, very... Uh, well, in San Francisco, Columbus Day kind of translated as a, um, uh Italian right. holiday, you know? That it was a celebration of, of Italians. Uh, and so that was how Columbus Day was celebrated. It was, it was celebrated more as a celebration of being Italian. But what they've done is they don't they don't want you they want i don't think we we're going to celebrate it anymore because the forces of good or as they're better known the wokes um decided that he was an oppressor of, right of the american indian uh and he wasn't he just came here and he saw these people and he said oh they're indians oh they're from india you know but you know they were robbed and they deserve to be able to get a free casino, you know. So I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I forget yeah. how long they've had them. I guess for the last twenty years or so, maybe thirty. Yeah, the only thing I could never understand, and please forgive me, folks. I'm not saying anything about the Native Americans here to, is disparagement, but their Indian art that they sell is terrible. I don't like it. It's just, it doesn't work for me. Uh huh. How about you? Yeah, I, I don't, uh, the art I don't like is the, uh, the South, uh, South American ancient. Oh, that stuff. Is, that stuff, yeah. too. Yeah, well, it's like the Indian art. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, based on the same uh, cultures. Because it's all Aztec and Inca and, uh, Inca Dinka do. Whatever. Anyway, uh, so uh, you play a, a, a casino. When you go to the casino, you don't gamble, do you? No, I used to. I used to like to play craft, but I don't do that anymore. Yeah, why go there, get paid by a casino, and then give it all back to them? Well, that's the way I think Vegas got a lot of their money back from their performers because the performers would gamble, and they <laughs> some of them had horrible problems. Yeah, and rather, and you would think that the the casino, like Frank Sinatra, went out and gambled away his entire salary for a week at the casino. You would think they would just spot him that because he's Frank Sinatra. He's making you yeah. money, you know. But then again, I don't know if that would. I wonder. I'm not a gambler, and I wonder if they said to me, "Okay, you can come in and gamble and lose as much money as you want, and we won't take it from you." Okay. I don't know if I was a veteran gambler. That would be interesting to me. Because isn't part of the thrill the ability to lose? Yeah, I think the psychology I've read is that most gamblers, they want to lose but subconsciously. In other words, they keep going beyond uh, winning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if you win a bunch of money, then you don't stop, then you're an idiot, right? Right, exactly. 
So um, anyway, so you played this place with Dana, and it went over good, did it? Went over great, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do the they Indian casinos pay well? Uh, yeah, they paid uh, monstrously from what I heard. <laughs> oh, yeah, but do you get paid by Dana, or do you get paid by the... Uh... Uh, Dana pays me. So. Oh, okay, so Dana gets the money, and then he has to produce a show for them for that money. Right, and uh-huh. you're part of that show, so he has to pay you. And is he is he yeah. is he good pay? Oh, the best, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I like to think I used to be the best, but you know, <laughs> I paid well, didn't I? Tell him out there. You paid very well. Come yeah. on, folks, listen to this. Did I pay you well? You did. Yeah. The, uh, big, the best payers I had in comedy were you, Dana Carvey, Felipe Esparza, and Rob Schneider. Right. And I, you know, I didn't pay as much as those guys do, but because it's in modern times, I probably would have paid you as much as they're giving you. You know. Well, you were, you were, you were also paying more than just me in those shows. You're paying a lot of comics. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, I always told Gary, who was the guy who doled out the money, I always said, I want you to pay the comics the best money we can and still make a profit. I said because, you know, I'm in show business myself, and I know what it's like to you know have to live on the money you make from your talent and i don't want any of these guys to ever come back and say oh boy alex bennett he doesn't pay well at all you know i didn't want that you know yeah. and i and and not and i didn't want it just for myself i wanted it for the comics so i always told them let's just overpay them you know uh and we did on, on many an occasion we 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 were willing to overpay you know um, sometimes we'd have a headliner like uh, Bob Goldthwaite, and he'd make a chunk. Okay, you know, uh, and but we never negotiated with him. We never negotiated. I don't think we ever negotiated with you, did we? We just, no. I I had no idea I was getting paid till I got the check. And then you were always happy with what you got. I was always happy. Yeah. Yeah. So, in other words, the job here of, of Rob Schneider. Or Esparza or any of them. Do you get paid by Esparza as well? Uh huh. So he gets paid a chunk, and then he hires you to open for him. Right. Right. And uh, how many minutes do you have to do now? I just fifteen. Fifteen minutes, folks. But that's why he's so good. He has a tight fifteen. You. <laughs> tight fifteen. Well, you you you're a ser- your ju- is, your act is a series of one liners. Pretty much, yeah. So and you just come out and uh, hit them with that, and this gets the crowd focused. Well, and, if uh, they tell you five minutes, you do five minutes. If you do uh, ten yeah. minutes, you do he, ten minutes. What he does is because they're all one-liners, it doesn't matter. He just knows how many jokes he has to fold into that period of time. You, you don't, yeah, you don't argue and ask for more time, which I've heard people have done with some big acts, which is not a good idea. Yeah, well, I mean, here's here's my question to you. I mean, um, uh, now I forgot what the question was. Um, it had to do with we were talking about paying and, and jokes and jokes and that. Yeah, if I had to tell you, do your optimum. In other words, what amount of time is your optimum? What would you like to do in order to have the best possible act on stage? I'd say like that, that 15 minutes I like, yeah. 15 minutes is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes you wouldn't mind. And then after that I'm starting to, I'm in the weeds. Now most comedians go on and do what, an hour? How long did Dana do? He did an hour, yeah. An hour. Uh, the headliners always expected these days to do an hour. That's the Netflix length of time, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he's got an hour's worth of material. So you really could never be a headliner. You, no, you, you, I, I do have over an hour, but it's not. I wouldn't be happy doing that in front of a big crowd. Well, also, would your act, I'm asking, you know, that is not, not being uh, nasty or anything like that, but your act, it seems to me, has to be in a short form because yeah. you have a, a very distinct character that's very low key and that's funny for 15 minutes for an hour people might get a little tired of it yeah i think that's why i understand the uh 
the most comics that make it big have a really high energy level, and I think you have for like you said a long set, you have to have that. Well, of course. I mean, but you got to also have that much material. I Otherwise, mean, you're going to put him to sleep. Now, does does Dana write all his own material? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Because some comedians don't. Comedians. Some comedians have writers. You know, for the longest time, Bobby Slayton had writers. Did you know that? In the early days. I know he'd always take jokes, buy jokes from people. He'd yeah. buy jokes from people. Well, he had certain guys. I can't remember. There's one comedian. He always relied on uh, who wrote his act. But after a while, they all started kind of disappearing or giving up on the business or whatever, and he started writing the act himself. So now he yeah. writes his entire act. He was afraid in the beginning to write his act. Really? Yeah, because he didn't think he was that good at writing material. And yet now I think all his material comes from him. I, I haven't talked to him about it, but I, I, I don't think he has writers any longer. No. Yeah. Uh, but I think he will still, like, if you got a good joke and he wants it, he'll buy it from you. Oh, yeah. If I, well, if I went to him with a joke, he'd probably want to buy it. Although he, mm -hmm. does he, well, you know what he, he does do? We, he's known what as uh, his, uh, what he's billed as. He's billed as Bobby Slayton, the what? Pitbull. Of comedy. You know who made that up, don't you? No. Me. Well, really? Yeah. He yeah. must like it. He still uses it. Well, no, I, I asked him once. I said, you do remember who gave you that? And he went, uh, yeah, who? I said, me. He says, you're right. You're the first guy <laughs> ever called me the pit bull of comedy. <laughs> you know, I, um, and it wasn't anything that I sat down and wrote. It was just, you know, I inter introduced him once and I went, here's the pit bull of comedy, you know, and it stuck. You know, so. Now, he's great for an hour. Oh, he's good for an hour. He could do an hour and a half if he had to. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you know, he he's kind of an exhausting act. You know, an hour is about enough for him, and you're exhausted. <laughs> exhausted. Well, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about when you exhaust oh, an yeah, audience. Yeah. You know, you can be too funny. You know, you've got to build. For instance, you don't do an hour, but I'll bet you that if you ask Dana. He builds dead spots into his hour. Uh, because Every headliner I watched, actually, they do do that. It's usually around about the 45 or 50 minute mark. They kind of It's like a fighter that goes in the ropes and kind of relaxes for a while. They really slow it down. Yep. And then the last five minutes, they bring it back up again and close. And then they close with a big, uh, big laugh. Yeah, because I think you have to, uh, you got to pace it. You can't be like bang, bang, bang for an hour or so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're right. I've noticed, all the comics I work with, I've noticed that. It's kind of like sex. It's kind of like sex. You can't be bang, bang, bang for an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to take a breather. Yeah. I mean, I remember I always uh, created a dull spot in my in my sex. <laughs> uh, and, then I, and then I did it with, the I had the big finish. Okay. <laughs> big uh, finish. At least that was the excuse I used for the sex being bad. But, you know, I mean, what the hell? Well, Dana was telling me he thinks uh, because of the, now we live in the age of no attention span that uh, he thinks the comics doing an hour on Netflix is way too long and nobody wants to watch anyone for an hour anymore. I always like the uh, uh, HBO H, uh, half hour comedy hours. Half hour is good. You know. Yeah half hour you can do you got your best material you're in you're out nobody gets hurt but you know every time you do a special you got to come up with a whole hour's worth of material new material how do you do that oh it's you know, impossible I, I think it's impossible but people do it you know Chappelle does it all the time but Chappelle gets up there and is very conversational and his stuff isn't I don't know if they, he really does Chappelle do jokes per se? No, it's all conversational. It's all conversational, you know. But it's good. He's very smooth. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, so he, you know, he, uh, um, 
it's 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 a, it's a hard job you guys have. People always think it's so easy. Oh, you just go up there, you tell some jokes, you go home, you get the check, right? But it's not easy. Yeah, Carvey was saying Jay Leno's mantra was write jokes, say jokes, get check. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is all. Dana, is Dana still married to the same person he's always been married to? Uh, 42 years, Paul, I am. Wow. Wow. Now, there's a success story in show business. Yeah, he's, uh, I probably know about three or four people in my life that have been happily married like that. It's a real rarity. He's had a, an unusual career in that, uh, I remember there was a period of time where he was very sick. Do you remember well, that? Well, he had the he had the botched surgery in Marin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had a botched surgery. And how long was he living with that botched surgery? It took a while to get it fixed up. That that happened in 98, and he was out for it was maybe a year or two. Wow. And and what, what kind of operation was it, heart or what? It was an uh, open heart where he had a clogged artery and the uh, surgeon went in and repaired the good artery. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so Dana, uh, two weeks after the surgery, he said he's doing a little hike and suddenly he's getting the same pains he was having before the surgery. So he goes down to Cedar sinai to get another guy to look at it and... Uh, Oh yeah, you still got a clogged artery. They they played around with the good one. Oh, so gee. had to have the. He said he was so pissed because he had to go through that surgery again, like three weeks later. You know. Yeah, but he he survived that okay, and he's all right to this day. Right? He did. He's, yeah, he's in great shape now. He's probably the. Yeah. And then he had. He a was the healthiest comic I know. He had this. Uh, he said it's a genetic thing that caused his cholesterol to just go crazy. Oh really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Well, and then recently his son died, which... Yeah, you know, that was... Uh, I think that's why that's the first he hasn't performed since then. Well, so it, was, was, the it, was, it was suicide, right? Uh, it was a drug thing. Drug, drug thing. Well, I consider, you know, I consider uh, people who overdose uh, suicide because they know when they're using it that eventually that's a possibility, you know? And it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, if I did drugs, I didn't like heroin, I would have to say to myself, eventually I may overdose. Well, especially with fentanyl all over the place. And I guess that's really deadly. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you something. Um, uh, a lot of times they say the drug addicts love the overdose, provided they live after they're through with the overdose. Really? Because that's the ultimate high, you know. Uh, that's why we got we got to legalize heroin, and I'll tell you why. Because if it were controlled by the government, we wouldn't have anybody die. But it's when you have to go to nefarious people in order to get your drugs that you don't know exactly what you're getting. And the doses change from dealer to dealer, and what they cut it with is from dealer to dealer. Today, of course, fentanyl is the big, you know, the big problem. Uh, that's, that's why I never did drugs. I just couldn't believe that people would be buying shit up from the street. You know, who knows what the hell you're getting? You know, all of that's from the street, no matter what you're yeah. buying. That's why I'm glad, for instance, that marijuana is legal now. Um, it, it is almost too legal. I mean, what, what I do now every night to go to sleep, I, I have a vape, and I do a puff off the vape, and that helps put me to sleep. That's the only way. I won't get high during the day. God knows I feel dizzy and disoriented enough just with my neuropathy and everything that I don't need another drug that's going to do that to me. So, you know, uh, I don't do drugs anymore, but I do do that. And um, all this stuff is like they have gummies and they have the vapes and the this and the that. And, yes, you can buy joints, but who uses a joint anymore when you can use a vape? It's the lazy man's way of getting high. So it's all changed, you know. I remember, pot in the old days, you pretty much, the only thing you, that you did, didn't have uh, quality and that you were worried that they were lacing it with 
was nothing. It's just some pot was good and some pot was bad. Uh, and uh, I remember, uh, do I have time to tell this story? Uh, not really. I'll tell it okay. next time. Okay. We'll pick it up on the. So you've, you've never been a drug user at all, right? Not at all. Have no. you ever tried any of them? Uh, not really. I tried cocaine a couple of times when I first got it because of the 80s, everybody was doing it. And it what, just, what did you think of cocaine? It didn't do anything for me. It made me a little, the last time I did it, I think I did it three times. The last time it made me kind of nervous. I thought, Ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I want that, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, you... Were you, you do, it was you, amazing how many people were doing it in the eighties. Where'd you do the uh, Where'd you do the cocaine, Tommy T's? Uh, uh, Holy City too. <laughs> anyway, we gotta go. We gotta yeah. go. This has been fun. It's always fun with you, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, opening act for just about everybody. America's opening <laughs> act. Uh, <laughs> Larry Bowles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Now in its 10th year, this is Gabnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And it's Larry Bubbles Brown, and I'm Alex Bubbles Brown, and uh, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, we have a couple of people waiting to come on here. Hello there. This is where we start uh, talking and getting our people together. Uh, let me see here. Let me just adjust a few things here. There we go. Just a little bit lower. Okay, just a little bit lower now. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. We got some good people here. Got some really good people here. Watch this. Let me see here. I will go uh, at mid all, and uh, we will start seeing them coming in here. You see? There we go. There's. Uh, there's Charlie Wallace, and there's Kevin, and there's Jason McKinney. Hello, Jason. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, good. Good to see you all. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let me, let me put my earphones on. I think probably that will work better. Um, first of all, I want to, before we get going any further, uh, I wanted to mention the, uh, the deaths of two more people I knew. Um, one lesser than the other, uh, one that died yesterday, and uh, I, I really liked the guy. He was a cool guy, uh, and that was uh, my mind's a blank now. Oh boy, I feel like I feel like Trump. I mean, I mean uh, Biden. Biden. <laughs> Biden. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, um, uh, he was a, he was in Texas, and he was a. Uh, uh, sang songs and things like that, and he ran for governor. And uh, yeah, my good friend, whose name I can't remember right now, but I knew the guy quite well. Anyway, mm -hmm. somebody, somebody will put it up here. As long as it wasn't Willie Nelson, I'll be happy. No, it wasn't Willie Nelson. No, <laughs> we're surprised he's still alive. You know, yeah, it wasn't I, Jack Bishop, was it? No, it wasn't Jack Bishop. <laughs> It was, uh, 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 what's his name? God damn it. I'll remember it before the show's over. And then also today we lost Martin Mull. Uh, oh, wow. Really? I, I didn't hear yeah, that. Yeah. And I briefly knew Martin here in New York. And I, I remember my great story. Um, I, I saw him. I was walking in front of Carnegie Hall. And uh, I saw Martin, and I had known Martin through my radio show, and I yelled over to him, hey, Martin, and I walked over to him, and I said, how you doing? He says, I'm doing okay. He says, but I'm moving out of New York. I said, why? He says, nah, my career's at a standstill. I, don't, I think I'm finished in this business. And then I said, well, don't worry about it. You know, you got a lot of talent. You'll, you'll survive. And he went out to California, and he did a thing called Fernwood Tonight. And from then on, his career was movies and everything, you know, and he did, he did very well. Martin Mullen is fabulous furniture. <laughs> Martin Mullen is fabulous furniture. Sorry to see him die. His daughter wound up being one of the, uh, one of the producers and writers on The uh, Simpsons. Oh, oh that's really, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so he, he, he's dead. But who's the other guy? God damn it. 
Oh, God. You know, when I'm pushed to come out with these names, um, he was a country, he was a, basically a country singer, but he ran for governor, and he wrote a lot of really kind of funny songs were his thing. Mm. Oh, well. Not the guy who's like, you pissed me off, you fucking jerk. No, no. Jeez. <laughs> I, I, I might still talking. even have one of his albums. You, you what? I might still have one of his albums. He Who? only did a couple. I Whose think. albums? Martin. Oh, Martin Mull. Martin yeah, Mull. yeah. He had a couple albums. Uh, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to think who this other guy was. Who's the other guy? Come on, come up. I with mean, it. this guy I really knew better than Martin. Um. Oh God. Did he actually have any song play on the radio? Oh yeah. Yeah. Can you think of a song? No. <laughs> I swear I feel like, like, now I understand. I feel sorry for Joe Biden. Well, I felt sorry for him last night when I, there we go, Kinky Friedman. Oh, oh. yeah, I couldn't I think of his name either. That's who I thought you meant too, yeah. And it took Jeff to hold up the picture <laughs> for me to, to remember. Pam showed it to me on the New York Times today. Yeah, Kinky Friedman. And his Texas Jew boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was the name of the group. And he ran for governor uh, down in Texas. And if I had lived in Texas, I would have voted for him. Yeah. You would have been one of the Jew boys? Huh? You would have been one of the Jew boys? I would have been one of the Jew boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, uh, but he's gone. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, Joe Biden's gone. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, when you've lost, you know, when you've lost the New York Times, you've pretty lo well lost your most uh, ardent uh, uh, supporter. Um, the New York mm -hmm. Times today said that if if uh, Joe Biden want, really cared about America, he wouldn't run. You know, mm -hmm. he'd put somebody else in there to run for president. I was hoping he would have at least came out today and said, you know what? I had a cold last night and I took some medicine and I was stoned out of my fucking <laughs> gourd. I, I would have been like, hey, all right, I get you. I understand. I can let this one pass. Let's see how you do on the next one. Yeah. Like codeine yeah, but, really hit you. Right? <laughs> but but, but what, what Trump would have said, see, I told you he was going to be on drugs. Yeah. 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 He he obviously was sick or something, but you know, it, that just yeah, that was embarrassing. Yeah, well, that's what they said. The spokesperson came out and said that, that he was he had a cold. Well, yeah. you know, it's interesting, and I told the guys this last night after after we talked. I I had to go out last night for some reason, for about a half hour, forty minutes. My my radio was on the CNN, I think, and they were replaying the uh, debate mm -hmm. and I heard you know maybe 20 minutes of it while I was driving listening to it without seeing it was pretty it made Trump sound twice as bad and Biden not as bad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least a section that I heard now it was only See, just a section uh, that's but why I wondered was, about some of that because there, there were points of times where you know even Trump did come on and say like what did he say? Because I, I didn't really understand what he was saying at the end. And there was a couple of times where he did kind of go off into a moment. Yeah, mumble. and it didn't look great because he stood no, there, he, he'd stand there and uh, had that deer in the headlights look. Mm -hmm. But if you were listening to it, you wouldn't know that was going on. But it wouldn't be as bad. And it was a lot different. But I'm sure there were certain parts that were hard to understand probably, anyway. Probably, yeah. Like but when he went Trump into that whole like thing shit. where he, he answered one question to one. Th he wound up answering a question about immigration when the question was about uh, 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 women's rights, you know, to choose and whatever. And Who's he, that? Uh, 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 Trump. Um, uh, Biden. I mean, yeah, well, Trump yeah. did that all night long. Well, no, what Trump did all night long was any hard question Lie. he was asked, he'd answer another question. Yeah, and he lied about it on top of it. He'd lie about it, but he uh, he just completely went off the deep end. Uh, uh, Charlottesville never happened? 
The, yeah. Trump straight up said Charlottesville never happened. Like that, that was all just a, a lie. It was all fake. Oh, and news I never and had sex with a porn star. Right. Yeah. You know, hmm. I. You know. I don't. Hmm, I don't even think your supporters don't believe that. You know. Should have brought up grabbing pussy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I don't think I don't think uh, uh, Biden was any shape to go after him last night. For some reason, he was off. You know, and I understand it. You know, I mean, I'm his age. I'm older than he is, and I just couldn't remember Kinky <clears throat> Friedman for crying out loud. You know, I understand. Yeah. I also understand that the ability to not be able to debate is not a qualification for president of the United right. States. Correct. Correct. And it never I happened. also understand that. if Biden was six feet under, I'd still vote for him over Trump. Me too. Uh -huh. <laughs> but hell, I was uh, the head of the debate club, and I should be president of the United States. What? You know, that doesn't qualify you. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I mean, it it, it 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 to say that the that that was the end all. I mean, if I were Biden, I wouldn't have done the debate at all. I I would know my limitations at this point in life. But look at him at the State of the Union. You would not be saying if you if you see him at the State of the Union and then you're thinking about the debates. I'd be like, hell yeah, go do your freaking debates, man. Because State of the Union, he no, was no. he was on it, man. That's no, why they no, kept no, on saying he, he was he, drugged he, up. I don't know if you saw him speaking <clears> today. Yeah, uh, he was down in South Carolina somewhere. In both cases, he had a teleprompter. And when he has a teleprompter, he's fine. You know, but when he has to be extemporaneous these days, forget it. Now, I saw him on an old Letterman show just tonight before I came on here. Uh, and uh, this had to be when he, before, when he was running against Obama for the nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, man, he was so lucid it was ridiculous. And then I saw the debate that he did with Trump back in uh, uh, back in uh, 2020, and he was terrific. You know, he was just great. <coughs> what you saw last night was an entirely different Trump, and I don't buy that it was cold medicine. And I don't buy that it was that he had. But a cold. that's what he could have sold it to be, and I think that's where he made yeah. a mistake. Yeah, he should well, have said, "I was stoned out of my I, I mind." Th I but think the, the better show must go off. the better excuse that he had was the one he gave today in that speech in I think it was South Carolina, in which he said, "I'm not as young as I used to be, as you may notice." Mm -hmm. He said, "I don't walk as well as I used to." I don't speak as well as I used to, and I certainly don't debate as well as I used to. But I can tell you one thing, you know, and basically he said, I'm honest. He said, I, told, I tell the truth. I tell the truth. And that was, a, a, that was great. I don't know who wrote all of that, but that's the perfect way of explaining it. You know, it doesn't matter if I can't walk as well as I used to. It doesn't matter if I sit there with my mouth wide open while I'm listening to somebody give an answer. None of these things matter. What matters, can I run this country? And you can't tell that by the way I walk or the way I talk or whatever. And I, I agreed with that. But one thing I did think was funny, like as soon as he walked out, I was like, oh, man, there's a doddering old man walking out there. But when Trump was walking out, I was like, Oh, wait a second. <laughs> His walk ain't much different either. No, so. no, it's about two years younger is what it is. <laughs> Three years younger. That's but all. it was still there. They were both the very slow walking out there. They weren't the, you know, these big steps and chest held high and everything. And neither one of them were like that. So yeah. well, that's where America needs to realize Trump's is only a couple of years younger yeah. than he is. And he is nowhere near as physically healthy and physically fit right. as Biden is. Trump was teasing Biden about falling off of his bike, but Trump would never, I mean, he would never even try to get on a bike. Right, he can't even ride a bike. Yeah. No, he can't, he can't. But then they got into that whole thing about who was a better golfer. I thought yeah, that, that was, got to That was crazy. You know, that was getting really down and petty. Petty, <laughs> not down and dirty, down and petty. But mm. I mean, I, I don't think America's ever gonna see another debate like that again. So I'll tell you what my ultimate hope actually is. So the Republican convention is before the Democratic convention. Mm -hmm. We had this one debate before the convention. So all the Republicans mm -hmm. can all be pumped up about Trump. Trump did a really good job. He made Biden look like a fool. So they're going to vote Trump in. The Democratic convention is going to be a little bit later. Biden might say, you know what? 
I'm out. Get somebody else in here. And then they're stuck with Trump, and then we get somebody who we can pick. Well, you know, I, 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 what's his name? The, the raging Cajun. What's his name again? Uh, oh, God. Uh, Carlin? <laughs> hmm? Carlin? Oh, James Carville. James Carville. Carville. Uh, said that I, I was on a show I was watching. He said, virtually anyone younger than either of these candidates could win the election without even breathing heavy. Yeah. He said, and if, if we had a younger person go in, I mean, the worst thing for the Republicans now is for them to completely yell and scream about how in, uh, Biden is not ready for uh, to be a president again. He can't be president again because he's out of it. Because then we'll just swap him out for somebody 30 years younger than Trump, okay? <laughs> a, a good guy, I think, is Gavin Newsom. He could he could probably take him in any debate with his eye, eyes See, I, closed I, and I his hands I think Gavin Newsom is way too much of a liberal that people will not like. You yeah, know, that's that yeah. California stuff that people yeah, are going to sit there. Listen, I don't care. I don't care. So, but Anybody, I, got, he, I just have a better idea. I'm saying he, Gretchen Whitmer, nah, my nah. my governor. I nobody think knows, she could sit there. Nobody knows who she is. Oh, bull crap. Everybody, you watch these Sunday shows, everybody's saying they want Gretchen to run. They want Gretchen to run. And she can easily sit there and say, you know what? These Trump guys have came after me before. They tried to kill me, and I took them out. So, you know yeah. what? I'm okay, ready. I'll, I'll buy that even Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmer could probably beat Donald Trump well, without thinking. Sure, cremate him. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, Gavin Newsom could cremate him too. I mean, ask ask Kevin how good is Gavin Newsom, Kevin? Yeah, he'd probably take him out pretty easily. Yeah, he's yeah. a good talker. It's just the rest of the country is just going to look at that and say, "Oh, you got this California." Yeah, Democrat you'd, get, you'd have the there, South right? all. You'd have the South so, all over. And that, that's where there'd be about. And well, that's what I'm saying. Gonna, at least with Gretchen. Yeah, yeah the South is on, the, on Trump yeah, anyway. Trump's so, going to yeah. win the South anyway. It's South, yeah. He's gonna, they're going to win the South anyway. It's, it's so, the it other matter. ones that you're going to have to lure over, and I don't know how much of the independent side that you would get on that side. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that'd be a be a hard sell, but you might get enough. Yeah. So you're saying Gretchen Whitmer? That's who you're going with? Anybody oh, else? Somebody else. They were suggesting Shar or something. I can't remember the name. Well, if you can't remember the name, then it isn't. <laughs> yeah. right, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. the governor of Illinois, Pritchard. They, they, I've seen him pushed up forward yeah. too. They but even, then Gavin Newsom, he doesn't he like bow down to Kamala, you know, like so much. I would never well, run I against think, her. I, th or I anything, think blah, blah, I may blah. be wrong on this, but I think he was sleeping with her at one time. Yes, I think that's what uh, the rumor was. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't get past that voice, man. It's just she sounds so much like a country club elitist when she talks. I just, I, that's the one thing about her I cannot stand. Well, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I happen to like her a lot. You know, I happen to think she's okay. I think people are not giving her a, a proper uh, vetting yeah. when they think about her because, you know, most vice presidents are non, you know, you ask anybody, what do you think of the vice president? Well, I wouldn't want to see her or him as president. You know, the vice president always has a bad time. So, you know, um, uh, I, I uh, but I think she I think for instance if she became president I think she'd do okay you know I don't think she'd do a horrible job I, I, and I agree it's just like I said it's just the, the way I hear her talk to me you just sound she, she is sounds not like her an voice, elitist her voice is not as appealing no I'll it, it agree is not it's like she's nasally just it, it like makes her sound like a snob elitist I just I can't I don't know and what's wrong with a snob elitist yeah. <laughs> I don't want a snob elitist to run me or run my country. You know, you're an elitist. Do you, do you know how the middle class feels? Do you know what the middle class or the poor people go through? Or you just want to go sit there and play your tennis at the tennis court or yeah. you know, the country How, how club. do you think, uh, Kevin, because you live out in California, so you live every day with Gavin Newsom. How do you think he would do as president? Would he be a good president? I don't know. I have problems with him. What do you have? What are the problems? Uh, just some of the things he does with the money, it just bothers me. He he throws money around in strange ways, and 
you know, I get pissed off at him and I just don't watch him sometimes. You know, he does some weird stuff with money. You know, one second he's saying he's fixing the roads, then he's going to he's going to dump everybody, give everybody a check. And you know, why are you giving away checks? We need that money to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, with that mm-hmm. gas thing going on, and and then he decides during COVID he's going to give everybody a check uh, because they were inconvenienced during COVID. I didn't think that was right. You know, there's there's just some strange things that he does. I get who is who, he's trying to help he, people out. Was he but, the governor that wanted to give every black person in California yes a check? Yes. Yeah. 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 But the screw the indigenous one. people that you took the land from. Yeah, Yeah, you know, it's (laughs) the same thing, you know. Why do you pick and choose, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. He might also have another problem, slight problem, is that I do remember that when he was mayor of San Francisco, wasn't there a little problem with he and his wife and him cheating on her with her best friend or something like that? Yep, that happened. And then the old, the, the, I think he did fool around with Kamala at the time too. Not that time, but around that time. Yeah, but yeah. Trump fools around with well, all she, the time. She, so yeah. she was the right DA. Up. She was the Doesn't DA. Doesn't make it right. She was the district attorney of San Francisco while he was the mayor. You, you yeah, know who didn't fool around with? Same time. You know who didn't fool around with Kamala? Who Gretchen Whitmer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> How do you oh, know? <laughs> Yeah. The only thing I like with my uh, my governor too, like she does at times, like she tries to put on this like northern accent where she like sounds like she's from like Fargo, North Carolina, North uh, Dakota. <laughs> oh, don't you know? Take it? out the boat. You take out, the, take boat. out the boat. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's like that's not how we talk in Michigan. Stop yeah. that because that is another thing people will look at you and say, "I cannot stand the way you talk," and I will not vote for you. What other Democrats? Are- a possibility. Somebody was saying that Buttigieg is in the mix. Yeah, he would I would like one. to see Buttigieg myself. I've I think always he's said very that. smart. I think he's very efficient. Yeah. He's I smart. Think... He's got no baggage. It's just that he's gay what? and people don't like that. Well, that's baggage. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sandy... I don't call that baggage. I... What baggage is that? Well, I would well, call it... It could uh... be two baggages banging against each other. <laughs> <laughs> But I like him too. He actually he moved to Michigan too and became a Michigan resident. The guy, the guy is smart. He doesn't yeah. stir shit up. He just goes in and gets shit done. I think he's done a pretty good job with the transportation department. He's yeah. he hasn't stirred anything up. He's I don't know. I I like the guy. I think he's terrific. I, I, I think he's terrific, <laughs> and I like yeah. him. I think he's uh, you know. Uh, and, and Who's there's Sandy something? He's a, a, a senator from Ohio. Um, I think he would actually do really good too because he's from Ohio and Ohio, you know, will vote for their own and they're usually more linked to the right. <laughs> yeah. So like Sherrod Brown? Sherrod Brown, yes. Yeah. That, that's yeah. He would be really good. I really think he should. That's who been. I was thinking of. It wasn't yeah. the Sherrod's yeah. last name. It was the first name. So yeah. how do you think Sherrod this Brown. debate last night affected Biden's chances? Oof. I don't think it's as bad as it was because only because Trump did so bad. I think he did as bad as he could have. He didn't, he didn't improve anything. Well, let me put it this way. <clears throat> Let, let's say, I got to say something about Trump last night. He came out, uh, intact. Okay. Not, not to you and I, cause we know a lie when we see one and we know when he's uh, playing well, his it, little games and his horrible stuff. But to his base, he did just fine last sure, night. Sure, but yep. that's that's been there. I mean, he, they think he's God, and he didn't change that. Um, <laughs> did he bring anybody else on? No. One or two, maybe. The point, the numbers are saying that he didn't bring a whole hell of a lot on if he did, and then let him go a few more months and see how many he'd drop off again. You know, I think those numbers... From what I was seeing today, and I watched Fox all day long today. Well, as much okay, as I was, okay. I wasn't uh, home a lot. Uh, give me the spin there. The, oh, they're just the, God has resurrected, according. Or, you know, Jesus has resurrected according to them. He was there. He did everything. And uh, sh- my wife's calling me. I'm gonna have to hold off here. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> okay, we'll see you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Pussy whip. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It was it was it was a pretty uh, you know I mean I when I watch I watch rewatch some of it today, and I just I, I was I found it hard to watch, you know mm -hmm. I mean I felt so bad for for Biden, but worse than that I felt so bad for myself and for you and every American and I said to Marjorie this morning after thinking about it. I think we, oh, and today we have the Supreme Court do make a couple of decisions were, which were off the wall. Like oh, that. Uh, scare me. Yeah. I, I said to Marjorie, I said, I think today is the day democracy died in America. You know, because of the debate last night and the way the Supreme Court is voting today on uh, letting one of the uh, uh, people who was uh, a July 6th uh, attacker. June 6th. Huh? A Jan June 6th. January. Or, I'm sorry, January. January 6th uh, 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 guy, uh, he, they, they said, well, the, you can't charge him with insurrection. Or was it insurrection? Was that what they couldn't uh, charge it, him Was with? it impeding an investigation oh, or something? Uh, 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 oh, what is it? Impeding the... Uh, yeah, tell her to let him get stolen. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no. What what was what was the uh, thing today with the Supreme Court? What was the term they used that they? Could, it was like impeding an investigation or something like that. that well, it was impeding. Kind of it like was that. impeding the the government from doing its job, basically, and they said you couldn't arrest them for that. What? Obstruction of justice? Is that what you? Obstruction? Know? Yes, uh, obstruction some, of justice. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, but, but what? It, it, you know. Yeah, they over overstepped. Is what they said. But how is that overstepping? I have no idea. I, mean, I don't guy, know what guy, that ruling was about. I went, what the fuck are you talking about? This guy. You're illegally inside of the Capitol. Even if you didn't do anything, you just walked through, but you were illegally in there with the rest of them, your ass should be charged. Well, you probably crawled through a broken window to get yeah. there. Oh, no, no. The police were walking, welcoming them in. Yeah. They took, a crap all over, they took a crap all over. They took a crap all over Nancy Pelosi's desk, and they were yeah. rubbing it all over the walls. Oh, that—that's where the bathroom is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, they were just wanting to visit the Capitol and see what, you know. It just—they stayed inside the ropes. Yeah, remember oh, that? Oh, and then then Trump last night trying to blame Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, <laughs> I, I offered her, you know, the the re reserves. She turned it down. She admitted it's but all her they have fault. film of Andrea, uh, Andrea Pelosi, Alexandria Pelosi, her video of her mother sitting there calling on the uh, on the uh, uh, powers that be, get some police down here now. But it's yeah. her daughter's fault that it's her it fault. all yeah. came out. You know that Nancy Pelosi admitted she got the guard and was offered the guard and she turned it down and her daughter in her documentary showed that she did this but you know why isn't the press today making more of these blatant lies, lies? <laughs> you know they cnn they, did a lot today they were covering a lot like this was a lie this was a they lie, had a lot a lie to do. But, <laughs> right yeah. But they, they should be pointing out more, like how much of a lie. Well, it why really did was. why didn't your little Laminians last night who work for you call him on those things? Or the at the very least, when they would ask him a question and he would answer another question or go different. back to something and never and hope he can run out the clock enough so he doesn't have to go back to the question they asked. They should have just said to him, and they did on one occasion, but only one. A couple of times they did it. Yeah. yeah. They should have said, Mr. President, because that's what you call him, uh, will you please answer the question? And if you don't answer this question, we're stopping the whole debate right now. Ooh. That's what they should have done. Because they could and then, say, and then we, CNN would have gotten blasted for being no, you know, they one say, sided. They could say we didn't, we stopped it because he wasn't answering the questions that were being asked. Yeah, but asked. you know what the base would have said? They would have said, oh, yeah, they're, you know they're what being I say to, CNN. You know, there they are. You know what I say? And to then the that's base. what he would have done. He would have said, see, that's the kind of thing they would have done. Here's that's your, why got, they did I, it with CNN. I got you. Oh, I get it. I got your base right here. I, I got you. I know, but that's what they would have done. Mm hmm. So they were trying to be fair, quote unquote fair. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's bullshit, but that's probably what was going on. And he, you know, Jake Tapper kept going back 
and he would say back, he would read back the question. Now, I'll give you another 60 seconds. Here was the question. Would you like to answer it? And he'd read back the question, and then he'd go off on another freaking rail. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was, he gave him the chance. Go ahead, Jeff. Those guys are wimps as compared to people who used to uh, talk about the president and, and uh, I don't know, like 40 years ago. It was a total different attitude. Well, they're worried for their jobs. They're worried for sponsors. They're worried for a lot of things. Uh, where in the old days, you know, what happened was the, where everything went wrong is there was a period of time where newscast, the news departments at the networks weren't expected to make a profit because that was the thing that the networks would point to with pride as their crown jewel. You know, look at our news department. We have the CBS used to go, CBS News, it's the Tiffany's of, of news broadcasting in this country. They never made money. CBS never made money off of, off of CBS News. And then one day, I can't remember what it was, but it started making money, a little bit of money. And they figured, we like this. This has got to be a profit-making organization now. Oh, and it came out of deregulation, didn't it? Uh, it was part of Reagan's, uh, when he got rid of the fairness doctrine and all that right. stuff. Well, no, that was another situation altogether. This was... Something that was that during it, Reagan. This was where yeah. they started saying, we're going to make money out of these news departments. And then the they whole thing changed. They didn't say that before because they were required to have the news department in order to get their license renewed every year. They had to show some kind of community no, benefit. No, 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 no. What, what, what that made possible was for a Fox News. You're talking about the uh, the deregulation of, mm -hmm. of federal, you know, of communications, in which they said that you didn't have to give equal time to opposing viewpoints. Uh, that was actually Clinton, wasn't it? Yeah, the first person to take oh, advantage right, of right. that, oddly enough, was uh, Rush Limbaugh. As soon as that happened, he saw an opening to start doing a talk show that was a right-wing talk show. That's not to say he was right-wing. He just he saw that as an opportunity. And uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he in, in those days, if I said something on the air politically, we had to have somebody with the opposite just opinion right. to come on and argue it with me, you know. Uh, and, and so that came to an end, and so you had all this biased programming. But this was something else that mm. happened, and I'm trying to remember what it was. It was the first thing that really made money for them in the news departments, and they decided news has got to be money-making from here on in, and so it's a profit-making venture now, mm. you know. And because it's a profit-making venture, all they think about is uh, is the profit margin? Yep. And as soon as those two guys walked on the stage, that was money making for them. Do you they didn't know, have to do, do anything that, else. I thought that was going to get the biggest ratings of any debate ever. It didn't get as high a rating as the debate in twenty twenty. Got about really? twenty million less yeah. people. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see what kind of ratings it got. I wish it had gotten less, and they wouldn't have seen Biden do what he did. You know, yeah, but uh, I mean, I mean, I, I just wonder how Biden feels today, uh, knowing what went on last night. I mean, it, it, you could be a fly on the wall. Man, he he stopped by the Waffle House on the way home last night. Did he? Yeah. Really? Why? Be with the people. Be with the people. I see. Grab himself a waffle and some chicken. I mean, did did he know how badly he was doing? Oh, I'm sure he did. Are you sure of that? See, here's the thing. I'm thinking yeah. that the, why why won't he say, okay, today I'm going to not run and let's get somebody in here who can just clock Trump's ass, okay? Well, I, and the yeah, reason he is, may have been get he may have been clouded on the way out, but. You know, I I'm sure he's gotten a little bit of uh, education overnight. Yeah, yeah but but I'm but the thing is that I think he isn't saying okay, I won't run because of his ego. It's ego. It's the only thing that's keeping him there. Why, you know, why should he run again? What does he need this for? 
You know? I, I truly think he cares about the country and he knows what might happen. If, well, he, if he cares I about, think if somebody if, if walked up and... If he truly cares about the country, he would step down. Right, but you got to know who's going to be there and who is who is that. Yeah, That's the thing. We don't know what's going on over there. We don't know what's, you know, going on outside the, the Biden door. All kinds who's of... Who's standing there going, <laughs> I'll take it for you, Joe. All, Who's standing there doing that? But all kinds of Democrats are imploring him to quit. They're saying, yeah, do it, step yeah. down. But who's saying, I'll take your spot? They're, they're too that's afraid the to problem. say that, too, though. And that's just where yeah, the yeah. two loyalty thing is. That's the problem. They're is. too afraid to say it. Well, if they said that, that would be more fodder for Trump to say, even these guys don't believe that Biden can do it. And that would just makes things work. Well, yeah, like I said, who knows what's going on behind closed doors, too? There could be guys going up there and say, hey, you know, if you really don't think you can do it, I'll take it over for you. Think about it. Mm-hmm. This is going, this is just overnight. Give it a couple of weeks and see what happens. Well, I he might be sitting there thinking about this. Given a couple of weeks, last night's gaffe will be forgotten. There um, you go. That yeah. happens too. Yeah. And, and, and the same thing will happen with Trump. And he's going to go out there and make all kinds of noise at these rallies and start doing his dumb shit again and continue to lie and he's going to start whatever two or three extra points that he may have gotten they may fall off again well i'm hoping that what last night's uh, supposed victory for trump right i, did, I, I still don't was, see it, it as a victory was, was emboldened him to stupidity you know that if he gets emboldened enough he might make a major mistake he he did nothing new last night. Nothing, nothing at all. He just say that Charlottesville in, never happened. That was extremely. He increased huge his lie. fascist fucking yep. bullshit. Yep. That's all he did last night. That's the only thing he did last night. He didn't tell us what he wanted to do to the country and make it better. He just said, "I'm going to make it better." What? But what are you, what, what are you going to do? Oh, oh, here that's what's here. scary though is he has enough people behind him to make this race even competitive. There were two real gaffes yeah. last night that uh, Trump did. Number it's, one, he said, "You elect this guy," pointing over to Biden, and he's going to increase your taxes four times. And I thought yeah. about that, and I went, well, what, 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 "What's the what's the average tax in America? Twenty eight hundred, twenty eight thousand dollars." <laughs> Four times is more than a hundred percent of your yeah. income. Uh, he also it, killed millions and millions and millions of people. Yes, that because too. Because of COVID, yes. that, that too. Oh, but oh, then and he, then also the, these immigrants who are coming in—they're killing hundreds and thousands of American women yes, every yes. day. Oh, yeah, but the yeah. other thing that he said that nobody, nobody—I didn't hear anybody complain about it today. He said, uh, uh, "If elected president." I am going to get uh, the guy in Russia, the Wall Street Journal reporter, released from jail before I take uh, my oath of office. Well, wait a minute. He was in jail when he Does, was in wait office. Minute. Does he have any power no. until he takes no. office? So how is he going no. to get him He's out of He's supposed there? to be meddling in foreign affairs. Yeah, yeah, he literally will be meddling in foreign affairs. But the the one guy from Michigan was already arrested in Russia while he was in office the first time. Yeah. He's been in prison for over five years now. The, the, fir- the didn't first didn't mention guy. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is I will, I will, get, I, and he, there was something else he said he would it do. It was before he reaches January 20th, he'll have him out. And, and also before he reaches January 20th, Ukraine he, was war. Gonna, he was going to do, do something Ukraine else. Ukraine war. He was yeah. going to end the Ukraine war. Oh, end yeah. the Ukraine war. Yeah. How can you... How it would you, never have started wait, if he was there. Wait a minute. You're not president. How can you do Correct. that until you're president? Correct. And Same nobody, old bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody... It, it, I mean, it, we, we had a guy there who could have made him be honest, and that was uh, Biden, but he wasn't too coherent last night. Uh-huh. And wasn't able to do it, but he he should have called him on those things about uh, about doing things before he becomes president. He can't do any yeah. of them. Yeah. Would have been a good comparison to compare uh, Nixon with the Vietnam War and his secret tapes. Jake Tapper could have added a question. Well, how can you do that before January twentieth? Well, he could have just said something like that. They weren't going to get that brave. 
No, okay. they weren't. They weren't going to get that brave. They were there, uh, you know, it was to make CNN look good, who looked like shit this morning. You know, everybody yeah. was complaining about how they handled it. But then again, it's a thankless job because no matter how they handled yeah, it, you, they would have, gonna... people would have complained, you know. Uh, but uh, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I think it was a pretty even thing. We knew mm-hmm. that... Biden was going to come out, and he was going to be funky, but he was a little more funky than he was, than we thought he would be, and we knew Trump was going to come out and spread his fascist bullshit, and he did. Yeah. So I don't think it was that terrible. It was just a plain old, good old shit show. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. I was watching today, the uh, Jon Stewart did his thing after the debate, and it was taped like... All Trump had to do was not be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about like how all Biden had to do was not stutter, not pause, not look old. Uh, he kind of dropped the ball on that. And then he's like, and all, <laughs> all Trump had to do, he didn't have to do anything except for not be well, an he, asshole. He would, have to, he would have to look wide awake like Don Giller is right now. Hello, Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Biden is not quitting. He had a terrible night last night. So did Reagan with his first debate with Mondale. And right. Reagan was saying, what the hell's going on? Uh, don't panic. Well, so it was I'm, Obama. I'm yes, Romney. He yeah, they had Obama. Yeah, Romney, but right. Obama was only in his 40s. <laughs> They didn't, but they didn't bomb in the quite the same way. I mean, the way that he bombed last night was in the way that people were looking for him to, you know, for signs that, you know, he might not be lucid enough. Well, uh, did you see his speech t- uh, today? Yeah, but that was on teleprompter. That wasn't off. The, but what? Well, it, what? So what? It's easier to read a teleprompter and look like you're lucid than to he try to. He could have stumbled, and he didn't. I think he did a couple I, of times. I just but. I just saw this and I I, I have no idea. Uh, Newsweek uh, tweeted that uh, that undecided voters after the de- debate are going for Biden. Go figure. Well, I think the next thing he should do is probably get arrested and be charged with something and be found <laughs> guilty because it certainly has helped uh, Trump. Well, yeah. that's not really. That's you know, and, and that's where one at one point where he's bringing up uh, Biden's son. I wish he would have said something like, "You know, he's not running for president. I am." Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, well, well, the best part was when they were comparing golf scores. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. We mentioned that earlier. That, <laughs> that, was, no, that was the lowest part of the evening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was that I'm was going, that what? Was, <laughs> that was the have, bottom. Ha, have they I was ever waiting played for him to whip out the together? cards? Yeah. Have they ever played a round of golf together? No. 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 <laughs> but they were almost going to. I was waiting yeah, for yeah. the head for the cart. I mean, I, I, I'll walk. I'll walk. I mean, I was I was just as despondent last night as probably you and everyone else was. But today I'm feeling more confident. This is it, it's a one night disaster. Yeah, I agree. And and it's and it's late June. Yeah. Uh, it's time to recover. Yeah, uh, think long term. You know, what's this day trading kind of thing? I, I I read about, you know, it's it's just relax. Oh, okay, I'll I'll chill. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll go now. <laughs> no, don't go away. You must stay with us. Once you join us, you must stay with us. Says who? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Gabnet law. It's gab. No, it's it's the internet law. He knows internet pretty well. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for the bylaws now. Let's see. <laughs> oh God, you're right. What? <laughs> I gotta stay. Damn. Oh, I see. Have you? By the way, let me ask you this question because I, I I have you found that you you find do you find YouTube a pain in the ass? Is is this a general to everybody or no to you? To you? No, because I find you know. I find, for instance... You find everything a pain in the ass. Well, of course. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on what kind of porn I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pain would be in the front. My, 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 uh, yeah, well, anyway, no, I mean, 
I'm, for instance, I, you know, I do the show, okay, here, and uh, I, I put it out live, and so there's a version of it that's the live version, and then I go back and I upload a, a video of it, a, a file of it, so that I have a second copy that goes up that is the non-air version, okay, get me? They're both mm -hmm. identical, they're both identical. Okay, okay. so, so so how are they one gets okay, one gets demonetized all the time and the other one doesn't mm -hmm. and i don't know well, yeah yeah i mean i mean your your particular use has its pitfalls evidently so yeah i well, mean the biggest, we all can't speak to the, the issues that you're having because they're unique to to what you're doing but yeah that sounds ridiculous well the biggest pitfall is i'm still doing this you know <laughs> It's always a live version that they say that. Well, you never, you never, right? you never monetized your stuff. Yeah, it was the, like the smartest thing I ever did. Not monetizing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I don't think I would yeah. have either because I, I would feel the same way you did. It's not your material. Well, yeah, but but yeah, well that yeah that's that's the that's the primary reason. But but is it? Uh, you can look up on the internet uh, celebrities' net worths. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, and and I, I looked up my name because I'm a celebrity, um, and it, it says that I'm I'm worth a million dollars because of one million of, of YouTube dollars. Because well, it they were off by a million dollars <laughs> <laughs> because they're basing it on the amount of views that I get on YouTube. Yeah, but they and, and assuming that I'm monetizing it. Well, they all they do have to do is look at it and see there are no commercials in your. Although yeah. there there probably is oddly enough. Actually, there are commercials now. Yeah, well, they are because oh, because other no content owners ha have monetized it. No, also because YouTube has monetized it yeah. for YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so that while you weren't wanting to make any money off of it because you found that to be patently dishonest or whatever because it wasn't your material. They, they, get caught. they have no compulsion about not charging, you know, not running commercials and making money for themselves. So, well, okay. You know, but yeah. All part of the, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so. Well, I've run out of things to talk about. Anybody? Mm. Uh, when you're going on vacation. I don't, I really don't know. We haven't figured anything out yet. You know, I that's like. so crazy. Like, you you know, you got the money. <laughs> First thing I would have been it's like, yeah, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Like, no, me too. <laughs> I've always wanted to go here. I'm going here. Yeah, but but you have to understand that I'm 84 years old. I don't walk as well as I used to. You know, there are a whole bunch you of can pay emotions. people to cart you around. Uh, that's what I'm yeah. figuring. Yeah. And, and I got to take I got to take uh, uh, Giller along with me because, uh, <laughs> you know, I have to spend that checky money somewhere. Yeah, because I'm holding the check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. We, 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 we want to go somewhere, and I think we'll do it soon. We'll do it fairly soon. You're invited. You can come to my place. <laughs> On vacation? Well, call it a... a a staycation? A, a well, call, call it a, a couple hours. Oh, it's not, not even a B&B. &B. You can fly to San Francisco and then fly back to Don's place. You're right. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. I could do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Having a 10-hour trip. Well, I was thinking of going out to California for a little while, but um, I don't drive anymore, so that's out of the question, you know. So I don't know. I haven't figured well, you out. you got people yet. out here who can drive you around. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. Alan's Uber. out here. He'll drive you. <laughs> Uber. Brian, he said he'll take you anywhere. Oh, Brian yeah. said I'll he would actually you. pick me up and take me places. Yeah. 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 I'll drive you. See. I mean, for, from one state to the next? What? From, you, you're going to drive him from one state to the next? You're going to cross I'll take him down I'm, to the border. I'm going to, I'm going to take an airplane. I'll take him down to San Diego and we'll go look at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's wide open right now. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, I haven't figured out where to go yet. But, you know, I had one thing I wanted to do. I thought a a, um, of a house in, in like Italy 
rent a house for you know a month that, that's where i'm at like when I, I love going to mexico and i always go to the resorts but like i'm done with it i'm over it like i think well, i want to go to mexico and rent an airbnb and stay in like downtown well i'd like to get a villa in italy for like a week or two right you know? yeah. get, hey you can afford it now man. i can get it for about five do it five thousand dollars a week you know do it and uh and also because they hold so many people i can invite all you guys to come out and join me yeah you know and uh, nothing worse than having you spend a vacation with me but you know that's your problem <laughs> you know. i'm, I'm on the, live huh i'm on the i'm on the no-fly list so i can't really you, <laughs> on the no -fly list? <laughs> yeah yeah actually you know i i, I haven't flown since 92 what Cause, cause i hate flying um oh. and 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 the id the the the, the state ID that I recently got uh, th there's plain and there's enhanced uh, and the plain one won't get you on a plane you need to you need to get an enhanced oh you need that real ID yeah, yeah you got to have a little symbol on it or else it... well I don't have that yet either I have a uh, hmm. no I got my driver's license uh, excuse me a driver's license and I think it has one of those things on there yeah, yeah. yeah it's valid does. Yeah. you have to apply for it so it probably doesn't yeah. All right because I'm I was thinking of going to of visiting a couple places in Ohio but they don't let you out of the state <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. under an assumed name but you, know, haven't Ohio, flown, you, haven't, lower. You, you haven't flown since 92 yeah Wow, and yeah. boy, are my arms tired. Well, I used Don't to worry, I, the planes haven't you changed know, there, at there all. There was a time when you could like you could like I could, you know, order up a, a seat on a plane in an instant, get on the plane and go somewhere. But you can't do that anymore. It's yeah. just too much. Okay, you just got to pay for it. <laughs> well, come on, you can do that. Well, the later you, the later you order a plane, the more it costs you. Yeah, well, you can get on. I just figured right, I, so your pajamas. I, I told Marjorie, screw it. Let's just get on a plane. Let's just, you know, call the airport and, you know. What's available? Yeah, what's available and where's it going? And But then once I get there, we got to have a hotel. Yeah. So I got to figure that whole one out. You we'll know. find out. And and then once you, you, you got to go through TSA. Well, you go to Europe, you got hostels. You just knock on somebody's door and say, hey, can I stay here? Remember those? I'm hostile enough. I know people mm -hmm. used to do that. Remember the days when people used to do that? They just go to Europe and say, uh, where are you, where are you going to stay? I don't know. I'll find out. Yeah. Well, that's the way I they used to do They used to do, do that it. all the time, yeah. You stay at a hostel. Yeah. Well, a day before, I'd maybe have my business manager or somebody I knew or a travel agent that I was using just call uh, to Paris and f get me a room. Yeah. All right? They don't do that anymore. They go, when do you want to go? We have some uh, we have some things you can go on in uh, November. And I'm going, I want to leave tomorrow. I want to go now. Yeah, um, they've cut everything down so bad yeah, that they want to fill the planes. And then you got to go from, if you want to go, nowadays, if you want to go to Houston, you got to go through Denver, and then you're going to go down to Phoenix, and then you're going to make a left in <laughs> Vegas, and then you're going to get to Houston. Yeah, you but know, if I I've want... seen flights going to Portland that take 12 hours. If I want to yeah. go to Europe... <laughs> If I want to go to Europe and I want to get a room and stuff like that, I, I can't just do that right now. If I want to do a, a cruise, let's say, mm -hmm. you can't get one. I want, I want to get on a cruise tomorrow. Sorry, you can't do that. <coughs> Why can't I do that? I got the money. You know. Just stay home. Yeah, that's what my... I've, I got a cube. I've got things I can do here, like go over and see Don. Or Don can come <laughs> see me, but he doesn't leave the house. So, you know. I, I left it today. Did you really? What did you do? Yeah. Uh, uh, went to the post office. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Write this okay. down. What's it like? Uh, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I walked by the post office today. We went out to lunch. Which one? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I didn't. Maybe I, I avoided you. The morning side. Uh, branch mm. on uh, 116th Street. Okay. Between uh, uh, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard and the, whatever the other street is. Yeah, that's where I was. We just lost, uh, what's his name? 
Oh, well. <laughs> we lost somebody, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What happened to him? Are you coming he, back? Like he, 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 he went on a cruise. Huh? Yeah. So how's the uh, how's the uh, how's the weather up there in uh, in Connecticut? Uh? Today was nice. Mm -hmm. Really? It's nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. You should come up for one day. Yeah, we should actually. Yeah, there you go. You get on the train and I'll pick you up wherever you go. Yeah, we we get we get the train uh, at 125th Street. And uh, we'll go up to Connecticut and... Uh, yeah, uh, could spend over a couple of days. How far is the uh, is, is your home from the train station? Um, the train? Yeah. I mean, it, re it re would require you like picking half up. Half an hour. Mm -hmm. oh. Half an hour, yeah. 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 Where, do you, where do you live exactly in Connecticut? What city? It's called Oxford. Oxford? Oxford, yeah. Oh, that explains the accent. Oh, Jason. It's a very just, interesting place. Jason just wrote and said. many years ago. Jason's computer, big, Jason's computer died. Ah. Yeah. So. Mine might die. Huh? So I've been having trouble with mine where it just crashes. Oh, wow. Wow, I hate it when computers crash. I was having trouble with this computer before we went on the air. My picture was flashing like crazy. It does this every now and then. And then I finally, at the last minute, f solved the problem. I turned it from, what was it, 60 hertz or something to 75 hertz. Mm -hmm. And the flashing all stopped. So oh. I'm good to go now. So that's that's great. We got another, what, two minutes left here. Oh, there's, there's oh, Oxford. There's Oxford, Oxford, right there. Uh, can you point out to your house there, Jeff? Yeah, step outside and wave. <laughs> you, how about that? Can you see oh, yeah, There you are. I see you. Yeah, you're in the uh, uh, the northwest corner. Not corner, but, but area of uh, Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. And he lives in a place with a swimming pool. Do you see Actually, a swimming not, pool there? Not at all northwest. Oh, wait a minute. Two swimming wow. pools, you say? We got an indoor and an outdoor. You're you're near you're near New Haven. But That's you're in a, a a complex that has these pools, right? Yeah, it's all for seniors. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Oh well, I don't know if I want to hang out with a bunch of seniors. You know. You don't have to talk yeah, it, to them. It's very close to Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing against seniors. I had a lot of fun when I lived in the senior community. Yeah, yeah. Do they pay, play pickleball now in their area? <laughs> right. Pickleball's fun, yeah. I don't want to go yeah. anywhere where they play pickleball. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to look. Play darts. <laughs> huh? Play poker. Play darts, yeah. yeah. Things like that, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Play cards. Yeah. Card, yeah, lots of card games. And well, this they, is what's uh, called, call folks, home. stalling for time on the Alex yeah. Bennett. Yeah. You're, back to, you're back to staying at home. Stretching. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Stretching, yeah. Now let me start playing the theme song here. There's yeah. a theme song. Everybody can hear it. Do you hear it, folks? They don't hear it because there's something wow. that, 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 that Zoom does that prevents music from yeah. going out across. So, anyway. Hey, listen, uh, thanks to Jason McKinney for having joined us. Uh, tonight, he his computer crashed on him, but you it was great to have you here, Jason. And you know, anytime, please, uh, Kevin. Good seeing you again tonight. Uh, always a pleasure. You're an intelligent and a good spirit of a human being. Yes. Uh, Charlie, the same might be said about you, and the same mm -hmm. might be said about Jeff. Giller. Okay. Eh. <laughs> you got two minutes. You're, 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 there's going to be commercial time that's not going to be filled. <laughs> <laughs> can I monetize this? I guess I can. We didn't even say any four-letter words, so I, I not yet. don't don't Damn. say any. Don't say any. <laughs> don't say. Any. Darn it. Anyway, hey everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave big big wave goodbye back at it. you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll uh, be back again uh, next week. Uh, 
as we do a citizen panel on uh, Wednesday, but we'll also do one on Monday. Uh, we will be uh, taking calls at uh, on uh, Zoom, and it'll go out over Facebook at 4 o'clock. It's our pop-up show. And then we'll be back again right here on Wednesday at uh, 1030 Eastern Time. In the meantime, uh, it's uh, Amy Manuel, who is next over most of the same GabNet with her fine gathering. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. As I said, I'll see you again next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.